All right. Up next, we have Andrew Bagg, who's one of the co-founders of Apewater. Come on up, Andrew. You remember the deal? So, yep. Hold on one second here. It's a little, it's a little warm. Get a little more comfortable. There we go. How is everyone doing? Nice to see everybody. I'm uh, Andrew, one of the co-founders of Ape Water. And uh, we're here to, br to bring fun back to water. Does that sound good, everybody? We're creating the ultimate lifestyle water brand for future generations through sustainability. And so what's the problem with water? Well, first of all, it's not really cool. And at best, it's just been a certain level of status and luxury. And it's never really identified any meaning. It was probably some marketing genius at Diageo that said, I can't cheers water, that's bad luck. And we're changing all that. Water is life, and we want to celebrate water. And so not just that, we also want to remove plastic and really create sustainability. The problem with plastic is it doesn't, you can't recycle it. You can only downcycle it where it ends up as microplastics that contaminate the oceans as well as our body. And that's not going to fly in the future. So we're the solution. What we've done is we partnered with um, some of the best aluminum suppliers in America to create a domestic solution to be price competitive against plastic. Not just that, we're not just a beautiful can. We partnered with Mount Shasta to uh, source what has been regarded as the best tasting water in the world, according to the Berkeley Institute. So the efficacy of the water is absolutely beautiful. It travels down through this glacier through a crystallized cave for 60 years approximately, where it pops out with perfect pH and alkaline levels. The problem with pH today is pH is fake news. People think pH with 9.5 is what you want to be because 9.5 out of 10, oh, that's an A. That's not an A. You're overly alkaline. You're creating acidity in the body. What you want is Goldilocks pH, and that's what we provide with Ape Water. So the addressable market size, I won't spend too much time on this, is 300 billion. It's a huge market. Nothing else comes close. It's going to be 500 billion by 2030, and most of it is plastic solutions. Um, so again, our can is sustainable. It's made in the USA, and our water is one of the best water sources in the world. In terms of capacity, our water can produce, uh, source can generate 400 million cans a year. Our price point is $1.99 to $2.99, or we do 12 pack where it's $24.99 to $29.99. But we're not just apes, we're IP agnostic, and this is where it gets in interesting. We feature the most unique IP on our can by licensing it and doing co-branding where we capture some of that audience. So we partner with athletes, musicians, big IP, uh, legacy brands, and we do collaborations even at events. So right there you can see Miami NFT Week. When you go to an event at Miami NFT Week and you get the Ape Water can, you scan the can, loyalty starts. And we onboard you immediately onto Web3 using your phone. There's no more friction. Ape Water is the key to the internet of Web3. So if you think of an analogy would be in the 90s, if you received an AOL CD-ROM, that's how you get onto Web 2. The can is how you get onto Web 3. It's seamless and easily, and we're the Trojan horse into that marketplace. And that's where the gamification and our loyalty begins. As soon as you scan our can, you're earning points. So you're at BevNet 2022, congratulations. You scan the can, you just earn banana points. Those banana points can be redeemed for extra value, and then BevNet gets to learn data about the customer that's there, and all of a sudden we have a feedback loop for innovation. So here's our market. We're doing direct-to-consumer. Uh, we're launching that in late December, um, and I'm happy to say that our gross margin is going to be close to 80%. We're starting in retail in Los Angeles and Miami, and followed by New York and Atlanta. Some of the biggest distributors are, are we're in advanced talks about uh, rolling it out. In addition to festivals, we already have purchase overs to the tunes of seven figures for 2023 at some of the biggest festivals and nightclubs in America. Uh, also conferences, I, I mentioned some earlier, big conference play for us. We're gonna be a water strategic solution for sustainability uh, for major conferences. I'm running out of time, so let me move a little faster. Uh, we have a give back. So five cents of every can goes to help domestic partners in need. So for example, in Miami, proceeds of the cans that we work with there uh, go to help clean Miami Beach. And we're working with NGOs right now to figure out how we can optimize our give back program. Our traction retail, we did a, dro uh, a drop two months ago at Fred Siegel on Sunset Boulevard. We had a line around the block because people wanted to get collectible water. It was definitely a first. And then merchandise. The water is just a Trojan her a horse to our lifestyle play. We have t-shirts, we have hats, we have jackets. 
and a whole slew of products I'll be rolling out because we're one of the true first water lifestyle brands ever. Here's some of our press we've gotten, uh, all this organic reach, there's Vogue business. This is people posing with the can. People love our can, they're constantly posting with it. I'm running out of time, our team really fast here are all a bunch of winners, collectively 100, 100 million in record sales. Thank you everybody, thank you. Okay, Andrew, come on over here. Thank you. Uh, if you could slide over just a little bit further, th thank you. Um, John, uh, you're probably the most knowledgeable person when it comes to NFTs, at least uh, in my world. Um, you know, how does this all work together? I mean, what do you think about this positioning of uh, Ape Water within this opportunity for NFTs in Web3? Um, well, I mean, if this launched last December instead of right now, uh, be a different time, but... Um, no, I don't know. Honestly, it's the, the biggest question I have. I mean, you know, I don't know. Like, you guys paid how much for that board ape? Like, two, f well, I don't know. Somebody bought it for, like, a lot of money, right? So. Please, of course. Um, so, we're agnostic. We license IP from the biggest holders in the world to give them a royalty of gross for every unit sold. Okay, so you're licensing that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, look, it's, it's, I think a board ape is kind of a polarizing thing. Like you're into it or you're like, you know, someone's probably gonna see this and be like, is it gonna scam me, you know? Um, I also noticed you, you know, photoshopped off the, the cigarette on the board ape. So I feel like I'd, I'd love to see the bigger picture of this as opposed to like the can right now. I feel like I see, you know, ape with cigarette and I'm like, well, gee whiz, like that's got a limited, you know, sort of thing there. Um, my only other comment is just, I think, you know, a lot of the stuff in the, beginning of the presentation, like Liquid Death is also doing a pretty good job making water fun. Um, and I feel like that's something that, you know, you guys should harness. Like there's room for more than one brand doing fun. Um, and I would just maybe consider that. Um, but I mean, a lot of interesting stuff here. It's just the vision is big, you know, so. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Dan, uh, what do you think about uh, using uh, water as a Trojan horse to become a lifestyle brand, as uh, Andrew talked about? Yeah, I think it's amazing. I, well, I'm disruptively, um, the most interesting brands in the beverage space right now have gone into big addressable categories like we talked about before and done something super disruptive in it, like Liquid Death. Um, I think Black Rifle Coffee is another example of that, but it's like, how do you, how do you break the codes of the category and really um, develop that? I think that... Um, there's a lot going on on this brand. Uh, you got a lot going on. Um, and I want, I want you to be right on it. I think that um, some of the pieces and elements you could probably strip back and have it become even more effective. And that's, that's what I coach you to be happy to you know, connect with you. I, I think this, um, this idea of um, becoming the, you know, the kind of access to the internet web, web three, that's a thing. Um, Ape water is a, a thing. The, the recyclability is, is a thing. And we gotta make sure you can communicate all that really well. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, one thing I didn't touch on is for us, we want to define the word ape and much broader than the word board ape yacht club. Mm -hmm. So yeah. where Gatorade represents more than the University of Florida, it represents excellence in sports. And so we see ourselves as being aping into sustainability, aping into the future, and aping into more conscientious approach, where our audience aspires to be an evolved ape versus a de-evolved human. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cassie, in your store's uh, velocity is uh, critically important. Um, do you see potential for Ape Water to be a, a top-selling brand? I know that's kind of a tough question, given that they're still brand new. But um, I guess how you how do you evaluate that potential? Yeah, this one's one I scratch my head a little bit, to be honest with you, because I, I do think you know Liquid Death's been mentioned, and I love what they're doing in this space. This one, I I just I scratch my head. It feels like. I want to create a really fun water, but you guys are trying to do lifestyle brand from the start. And I, for a retailer, I want to sell a shitload of water. And I don't feel that with this marketing. And it feels ju just advice, just less gimmicky and more about what the product is. I, I think it's a great story with the actual water, but when I tasted it, I did, it didn't feel special to me. So I think there's some romance that needs to be done in both the packaging and the storytelling of the brand. Thank you. Chuck, we're running out of time. Did you get the last word on Ape Water? Um, I, I'm just like terrified by the name and like how that extends. And like I get it when there's an ape on it, but when you like do those line extensions where there's no ape, I think you just have to be very careful with that marketing. Um, 
but I, I, you know, I definitely think there's room for another liquid death, so like find your community and make it really fun. Um, but I, you know, I'm not a huge crypto guy, and so yeah. you, know, you have to also, if you want to be successful, you have to under, like, be sell to me and people who don't understand the board ape world and, and be a little bigger and broader. But I, I think, like I said, there is room for another player, and you know, I think you've got a good head start, but maybe refine it and, and just get the messaging clear. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah. All right, great feedback. Well done. Thank you. Thank you.